Thank you for a great <clears throat> California, Santa Barbara welcome. Uh, I flew over a lot of snow today uh, getting here. I think that was the whitest uh, I've ever seen flying across the country uh, to get here. Um, I'm going to um, I'm going to talk for about 30 minutes, and then I definitely want to have discussion, Q and A, and I actually don't know what the quitting time is supposed to be, but. Uh, <clears throat> When everybody gets up and leaves, I'll quit. Uh, so I was uh, I was delivering um, I was delivering food up to one of our metropolitan buying clubs in Annapolis, Maryland, and um, we're in we're in the just uh, uh, how many people don't know what Polyface Farm does? Just a few. Okay, we're in the we're in the pasture based livestock business. We have piggerator pork, salad bar beef. Pastured poultry, not pasteurized poultry, <laughs> pastured poultry, uh, and eggs, and turkey, and uh, forage-based rabbit, and um, whatever else we can cobble together to keep the taxes paid. Anyway, um, and, and we, we direct market. Uh, we sell to about 50 restaurants and um, about 10 retail facades and about 3,000 families. Uh, 2,500 of them are delivered to in 29 drop points in metropolitan areas, um, anywhere from an hour to three hours away from us. We don't sell to anybody over uh, four hours away. Four hours is our what we define as our food shed, so we don't go outside that. So that's what we do. Um, so I was up there making a delivery, and this lady pulled me aside. You know, where I pull up to the house, and there's the yard full of, you know, ladies there to get their food, and. Um, I mean, the men don't come. It's, it's just a ladies' deal. And because uh, the men just grunt, you know, women go, you know, gather and <laughs> do all the stuff that holds the house together. And uh, one of those is, you know, keeping the grunter grunting. Uh, so anyway, lady pulls me aside and she says, so um, how do you make a hamburger? I said, Wait a minute, you know, what? What was that? Come again? She said, how do you make a hamburger? I said, you're putting me off. She said, no. She said, my husband and I have been vegetarians for 15 years, and, and um, I, he wants a hamburger, and I don't know how to make one. And, you know, it was like an epiphany for me, and I realized uh, that among many, I could go on at length about these things, but again, the reinforcement of just how disconnected our culture is in so many ways. Uh, you know, 200 years ago, people um, made their own entertainment at home. They made their own jokes. They didn't have professional uh, TV. You know, people ask me, what, what, what do you think we should do, you know, to, to really be innovative? I said, the first thing you need to be innovative is take your uh, TV up to the high hill, take your deer rifle, and put a bullet through that uh, TV. All right. Anyway, um, we don't have a TV in our house. Uh, I grew up without a TV and still don't have a TV. So that's why I'm so um, uh, uh, status quo typical and in, in the box. Um, <laughs> so so um, here, here we are, extremely disconnected, all of the things around home and hearth and family and the things that, you know, where we insourced our entertainment, we uh, insourced our, our education, we insourced our recreation of all the, the, the children's games books from, you know, uh, um, making, making your own toys to whittling to making your own whistles to all these little uh, things that families used to do together. Um, their own recreation, you know, picnics on the wherever. Didn't have to go to Disney World. You, you, you got a blanket, you got a little picnic basket and boo-boo and you went out and had a picnic, you know, uh, on the back 40 in the grounds uh, somewhere. You didn't have to go pay for entertainment. And, um, you know, if you had a medical problem, the doctor came to you. You didn't go to some, you know, bureaucratic labyrinth and try to, you know, fill out tri triplicate forms while you're in cardiac arrest to, you know, get in there and see. So, so my, my point is that we have become, for the first time in human civilization, we have the luxury to be able to go move into a community, build a house from materials we have no clue where they came from, with, with construction techniques we have no idea how to do it, 
to plug in to get water from a source we have no idea where it comes from, to plug in a sewer to take our waste to places we have no idea where it goes, to eat food from a supermarket we have no idea where it came from, in fact the label we can't even pronounce, and if we tried to duplicate it in our kitchen we couldn't. Who's tried to make high fructose corn syrup in your kitchen? You can't. We plug in, we turn on a switch to get energy from a place we have no idea where it comes from. We have a job, generally in a Dilbert cubicle at the end of an expressway, working for somebody we don't know who and never met, because we're, okay, we, we are incredibly disconnected. Thomas Friedman, in his, uh, in his wonderful New York Times bestseller, The Lexus and the Olive Tree, discusses this, uh, this fact that for the first time in human civilization, we are one-sixth of a second away from every human on the planet via satellite communication technology, but that sixth of a second is way too far for the very depths of the soul yearnings of the human spirit. It's too far for a kiss. It's too far for a hug. And so even while we are unprecedentedly, I don't know if that's even a word or not, but we, we, are, we are without precedent in our disconnection, we, we think that we're very connected, you know, with free minutes and cell-to-cell -cell dialing and all these things. We think we're incredibly connected when in actuality we are incredibly disconnected. And this really gained steam during the industrial economy when we moved from our agrarian economy to in the turn of the, to the, in the 1900s, 20s, and 30s to the industrial economy which of course was all about um, emptying the home, emptying the rural America, creating bigger cities, time clocks, pouring concrete, bending rebar, epitomized by the 1950s when we decided to even disconnect ourselves from our breasts and raised a, a, a generation of asthmatic sufferers on Infamil and Similac. One of the most, one of the most uh, uh, you know, obvious connections that we can make as a human family is you know, breastfeeding babies. So here we were in the 50s, that was considered barbaric and Neanderthal, remember? And then came the 60s in Vietnam and the, you know, the Mother Earth News, the cosmic nirvana, cosmic connection, tree muffins and tree huggers and, uh, and, and you know, the beaded, bearded, braless uh, Woodstock Revolution and finding our Earth Mother. And who would have guessed that by the 1970s we would have had La Leche League and Lamaze classes and would have a, and would have a generation of, of, of new dads who wanted to go see it. <laughs> that, that, was a, that was the pendulum swinging from the stiff upper lip and the taboo topics and the, and the duty bound, which I'm not afraid of duty, that the World War II generation, supposedly the greatest generation ever, that gave us duty, but forgot how to cry. And so we are trying to refine those connections. We are trying to refine the olive tree. Yeah, we drive around in that Lexus, you know, techno glitzy, woo, you know, big deal, okay? But at the end of the day, the Lexus doesn't nurture the spirit. The olive tree nurtures the spirit. 